Hey everybody, my name is Matt Hallam with Perspective Design and welcome to today's Dream It, Build It video. So today I'm gonna build this little more contemporary style modern chair right here, has a metal frame. We did some welding, some sewing, some upholstery. It was a fun project that used a lot of different skills. So I'm excited to take you along, show you exactly how I built it and hopefully inspire you to create something for you or your home. Let's get to work. All right, so let's get down to the fun part. Let's talk about the materials that we're gonna use for the build. So for the frame of the chair, as you can see, is mostly metal. So what I'm gonna be using for that metal is half inch cold roll steel rod, just a fancy term for metal rod that's half inch in diameter. We had this actually here at the shop. I think this will be heavy enough, I hope it will be heavy enough to actually give us all the support we need where there's no kind of flimsiness in the chair, but um, not be too heavy where it's just like screaming super industrial chair. So for the uh, support, once I weld the frame, I'm gonna use this upholstery webbing. This is actually used in upholstery a lot of times under the underside of a chair. This supports the springs and the cushions. So I'm actually gonna use this and make kind of a sling that's gonna go underneath the cushion. That's what will support the cushion. And then lastly, the cushion is gonna be made out of this vintage, um, it's like a grain sack linen. We bought this several years ago and it's just been sitting in the shop ever since. I thought it would be a great time to use it. Kind of the, the kind of texture of this linen, I think with the metal, will go really cool to kind of balance out that industrial look of the metal chair with kind of a softer look of the linen on the cushion. So inside the cushion, I think we're actually just gonna use some, uh, maybe some pillow inserts. So uh, nothing really crazy, but uh, so let's get outside and get to cutting some metal. All right, while I'm cutting this metal, let me give you a little bit of uh, specs on the actual chair. So the chair is gonna be 36 inches wide by 36 inches deep from front to back, and then it's gonna be 30 inches tall. So I'm gonna need nine of the 36 inch pieces of rod, and I'm gonna need four of the 30 inch pieces of rod. So get these cut, and then get this ready to weld up. All right, now that I got all my pieces cut, it's time to actually have some fun and get to work and get to welding. Now, I know welding for a lot of people could be really intimidating. Uh, not that you should go out and just buy a welder, but if you have a friend or a family member that has one, ask to come over there and just play around, you know, start welding, just sticking stuff together. You know, and over time, the practice, you know, practice makes perfect. But the thing is with welding, you can always fill in holes and you can always grind it down to look pretty. So. Just give it a try, don't let it intimidate you. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, I've kinda got my pieces here. I'm gonna weld the two side pieces of the chair first, the two arms of the chair, and then I'm gonna tack or weld the pieces that are the front and the back. So I've kinda laid it out here on the table. I'm gonna go ahead and use these 90 degree magnets on each corner as I go ahead and tack it together. And what I'll do, I'll probably go ahead and tack the entire chair together before I go back and really weld it in pretty solid and then grind it down. That way if anything moves, I need to tweak anything at all, I've uh, just tacked it together and not like really got on there and welded it well. So let's get to welding. The welder I'm gonna be using for the chair today is this little Lincoln MIG or wire welder. Wire welders are great for beginners. Um, there's not a whole lot you can adjust or mess up. It's pretty much your, your heat and your wire speed, but they're really good for beginners. So this is what I'll be using today. So here I'm using my tape measure to go ahead and mark off where my center support's gonna be on the side of my chair. I'm measuring down 15 inches, pretty much putting that support just right there in the center of my chair. And then here at the bottom, I am measuring one inch up from the bottom and this is where I'm gonna put my bottom support. So here I'm using my 45 degree magnet to go ahead and hold my corners square. That way I know everything is lined up and flush and then I'm just tacking everything in place. Not getting really crazy with my welds right now, just tacking everything in place to hold it. Here's the side of the chair complete. And then once I completed that side, I am using it as a template to weld the opposite side of the chair. I use my 45 degree magnets to make sure everything is square. So now I'm just using that first side of the chair as a template to go ahead and tack up the opposite side of the chair. And here you can see my welds 
where the tacks are, nothing crazy, just holding it together. Now that I have both sides of my chair finished, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up on the table and then I will finish tacking the chair together. So I keep going back and forth um, on the decision to go ahead and sew these loops like this and do that now before I tack these on. I could just pull that little tack apart and go ahead and sew these on the sewing machine. That way I, I know I can get a, a strong you know, bond and with the sewing on the sewing machine. I'm not sure about what I can do by hand. So what I'm thinking about is sewing these on the sewing machine and go ahead and welding up all my other joints really well. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I also have cut four of these. I have enough if I need to do one more. I might go ahead and make five just in case. Um, to be my support for the cushion. So now I have the chair outside and I'm using my angle grinder to go ahead and grind down any sharp edges or also grind down any wells that weren't quite uh, up to par. So I got the chair outside and I got it spray painted. So I wanted to talk to you. Um, I was gonna put like a polyurethane on it because I kind of liked the the rusty kind of little bit of that raw metal but then when I grinded down my corners and grinded down my welds and you had that new shiny silver metal there I could have left it outside for a few days and let it rust but I was wanting to get this video done for you guys so I went ahead and just did a matte black um, spray paint I showed you that in the video instead of doing the polyurethane so while that is drying out there I busted out the sewing machine now this is the the part that I'm less confident on um, I'm more confident on the welding, that kind of stuff. The sewing, we'll see. I'm literally just going forward and backwards. That's all I'm doing. But like I showed you before, I'm just going to weld the, I mean, sorry, sew these uh, loops in here just like that. And that's actually what I'll run the rod through. I'll do it on both sides. And this will actually become like my sling that the cushion will sit in. So it's really simple. All I'm going to be doing is going forward and backwards. Um, I can't do a whole lot on the sewing machine, but I can do that. So I'll bring you in close and uh, we'll get to sewing. I'm going to go ahead and sew this one first, and then I'm going to carry it out there and make sure it, uh, everything fits right. I kind of had to do a little test run on this sewing machine before I turned the camera on because it's been a little while since I used it. So let's see what we got here. Kind of just like welding, but with a. So go towards the end, then I'm gonna back stitch, set that stitch in there, and well, there we go. All right, there we go. We have a loop. I'm gonna go ahead and put another stitch or two in there just since this is upholstery and this is going to be set on you know and get some wear and tear i want it being super strong that's the reason that i didn't uh you know weld it by hand so i'll go ahead and get another one on here i'm using the same color thread you know as i as this webbing so you really can't even see this thread All right, now that we got all four of these straps sewn, I'm gonna go outside. Hopefully the chair is dry from the paint. We can get it inside, make sure these fit, and uh, continue on to making the cushion. So now we got the chair back in here. The paint is dry. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try out these pieces of the strap or the webbing that I made. I'm gonna go ahead and have my seams or the little tabs hanging off. I'm gonna put those on the upside right here so my cushion will cover those and looking from the back or the underneath you'll have a nice finished edge so let's see how my guessing or my measurements fit on here all right I think that would be nice I just didn't want it being like a big sag in the chair so you sit down and like fall down in there I wanted it to almost be flat here and then come up to a slope back here so let me get the rest of these on there, and then I'll go ahead and, and weld up these two uh, little sections over here on the side, and I'll get those painted, 
and then we will be ready for our cushion. So onto the cushion, onto the final part. So I've done a little bit of measuring and guessing, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut my top piece of fabric for the top part of my cushion at 40, I think I was gonna do 42 inches. I kind of use this extra piece of webbing to kind of fold on there and lay to kind of guesstimate what I want uh, the top piece to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to 42 inches, and then I'll cut my piece of canvas or duck cloth for the bottom. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna use this canvas, it's like a heavier duck cloth to go on the back or the bottom of the cushion. This top vintage linen is pretty expensive, so I'm gonna use this on the back side to kind of cut costs. It'll also look great. Uh, it'll be on the bottom side. You won't really see it. Another thing I'm gonna do, I don't know how to sew in a zipper, so I'm gonna do what I can do, and I'm gonna sew a flap in, actually. So on the bottom of the cushion, they'll, I'll overlap the fabric and I'll do a flap, and that's where I will insert my pillow inserts or um, any stuffing, or you could also take those out and wash the cushion if it got dirty. So that's what I'm gonna do in order to uh, get the pillows or the inserts in there, is just sew that flap on the bottom side of the cushion. Now that I have all my pieces of fabric cut, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pin it in place. So um, you just have these little pins right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pin it in place before I actually sew it. That way I'll kinda see how it's gonna fit, make sure it's gonna fit properly before you actually sew it. Well, this is the part I'm most nervous about. I'm okay with the welding, I'm okay with everything else, but the, uh, the sewing is uh, the most worrisome part. So I've got this pinned together. It is inside out right now, but um, I just wanted to kind of set it here. Hey, it actually looks pretty good. I think maybe we'll be good here. So it'll, I do want it to maybe hang over a little bit just so the back of your knees aren't hitting this bar right here. And then I also want the top to stick up a little bit as well so your shoulders aren't just up against that bar. So I think we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, try to sew this thing and uh, see what we got. You can see back here, here's my flap that I, I have pinned in here that we'll go ahead and use that to, to stuff the cushion once we've got it welded. So, all right, here we go. Cross our fingers. Well, it's the moment of truth. Did my guessing and measuring and sewing actually work out? Well, time to try it out. So I have my pillow inserts. These are just down pillow inserts. You can buy these a lot of places online. This is actually a 26 by 26. And I thought this would be handy for me to use just because I could, I wouldn't have to try to have something inside there. My only concern is that it might feel a little lumpy maybe, you know, like where the, where the pillows meet might kind of feel a little lumpy in there, but we'll try them out and see. Well, now it is the moment of truth. The chair is done, the webbing's done, the cushion's done, the cushion's stuffed, so now it's time to put it all together and let's cross our fingers that it actually works the way we planned. So I'm gonna take this cushion, set it in here. Oh my gosh, it actually worked. Wow, it's almost like too good to be true. You know, you hope it works out. Okay, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna sit in it the first time with the camera rolling in case I fall out or it breaks, we get it on camera. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna bring you in for some close-up shots here while I talk about it. So it actually feels really comfortable. I was afraid that the pillow inserts inside the cushion might feel a little lumpy, you know, where the pillow, well, where the inserts are, but it actually doesn't. It's actually pretty comfortable. The slope on the back is nice. I don't feel like I'm leaning all the way back. You know, it actually feels really comfortable. It's big, bigger than I thought could probably fit two people here. But actually, I'm really excited. This turned out better than I thought it would. All right, guys, well, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. This chair has been on my to-do list for a long time. I'm finally glad to get it knocked out. I hope you learned something along the way. I hope it inspired you. To maybe get out there and create something or build something for you or your home. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you on the next Dream It, Build It video.